JavaScript has a built-in method called setTimeout, which you can use to specify a specific amount of time you want to wait until you execute a specific function. And it's very easy to use. So first you say setTimeout, and inside the parentheses, now you can give it some arguments, what you want to do, and for how much time you want to wait until you do it. So first, we want to run a function, right? And the function that I want to run is that I want to show a pop-up dialog, like an alert box right here with a message inside it. So I'm gonna say alert, which is a built-in method as well. And inside it, I'm gonna add a text string, which says that's three seconds. So this is what I want to pop up. All right, now all we have to do is to specify the amount of time we want to wait until we execute, until we show this alert dialog. And we want to do that in milliseconds, like this. That's all there is to it. So now if I run this code, after around three seconds, we're gonna have an alert dialog pop up. And there it is. So it works. Now the downside of using anonymous or nameless functions as the one we used in the previous example is that you can't reuse anonymous functions. And they are also hard to read because they don't have a name. So we can fix this by using a function expression instead. And that's probably what, what you want to do most of the time. So let's create a variable called delay three seconds. And now let's assign a value, which is the function, which we want to run the code from before, the alert method with the message of that three seconds. And now all we have to do is to add this set timeout method and give it two arguments. One argument is the name of the variable that references the function we want to run. And of course, the second one is the amount of time we want to wait, 3000 milliseconds or three seconds. And now when I run this code, in approximately three seconds, we're gonna have the alert dialog pop up. And there it is. Now, here's something that's very important to understand about set timeout. And this is something a lot of people don't know, even experienced developers. And I recently found out about this. So set timeout is not precise. It's suggestive or more specifically, it is a minimum amount of time that it takes until your code executes. So 3000 does not mean exactly three seconds. It actually just means a minimum of three seconds. And here's why. If you have a bunch of other code on your website that is set to execute before this code, well, then it could take seven seconds, 10 seconds until this code actually runs. Now, hopefully not. That would mean that your website is horribly uh, organized and has terrible performance, but it could also just take four and a half seconds, five seconds, right? Or 3000 or 100 milliseconds, right? And the reason is that you need to specify it in your code base, which code is the most important for you and then run it in priority. So whatever is the most important for you to execute early on should be put or should be set to execute early on, right? So always put your code in the order of priority. So this is not precise, do not rely on this. However, you can make it so that it's somewhat precise if you just add this code or set it to execute as early as possible in your in your script files, right? So that's just the most important takeaway lesson here is that this is not 100% reliable, but you can make it more precise by making sure that it runs as early as possible in your JavaScript files. That's it for this video. I hope it has been helpful. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.